Welcome to the Algebra 2 final exam review for semester 2. Uh, I'm going to look at numbers 12, 13, and 14 in this video. Uh, number 12, we'll go ahead and read it first. Luke plans to visit two cities, New York and Boston, during spring break. There is a 60% chance of raining in New York and 10% of chance of raining in Boston during his vacation. Assume the chances of rain in each city are independent. What is the probability that it will not rain in both cities during Luke's vacation? That not idea of not raining is huge for the problem because that's going to change what percentages we actually use. Now, really, <coughs> what we're looking at is finding the percentage of not raining in each city first. So, for New York, New York has a 60% chance of raining. That means not raining would be the complement of that, which is 100% minus the 60%, which gives us 40%, which as a decimal is 0.4. The other city, Boston, the 10% chance of raining starts again, same idea. We're taking 100%, subtracting the 10%, which gives us 90%. So we have a 90% chance of not raining, which as a decimal is 0.9. Then you're just taking those two probabilities and multiplying them to get 0.36, which is 36%. So our choice, correct choice would be A for number 12. For number 13, they ask us, what are the solutions to the equation 3n squared minus 5n plus 3 equals 0? Now, if it's nice, then we'd be able to factor this, get the two factors, put them each equal to 0, and solve. But if you look at the four answers that were given, since we have these square roots and all of them, that, that means chances are we're not, it's not going to factor, which means we're going to have to use quadratic formula. So if you remember quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Our a value is 3, our b value is negative 5, and our c value is also 3. So when we start plugging in the b value, negative b, negative, and a negative, which will eventually cancel each other out, plus or minus b squared, negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, c, which is 3, all over 2 times a, which again is 3. So there it is all plugged in. Now we start to use our order of operations. This again, will can these sides will cancel, which gives us positive 5 plus or minus. I can go ahead and square this. I know that's going to be positive 25 minus. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these three together. Now if a, any of these are negative, I have to worry about the signs. But since the threes are both positive, this minus sign won't change. So now it's just 4 times 3 times 3, which is 36 over 2 times 3 is 6. Then when I subtract on the inside 25 minus 36, I get negative 11 over 6. And since we have the square root of the negative, remember that that was <coughs> an improper answer. But since we knew about imaginary numbers, we can then change this. So 5 plus or minus i for the imaginary number, that takes this, the negative out of the square root, which leaves us with 11 inside the square root, which means that our correct answer would be up here at the top, a. There's 5 plus or minus i root 11 over 6, same thing as that. Last one in this video, number 14. David wants to create several different six character screen names. He wants to use arrangements of the first three letters of his name, D-A-V, followed by different arrangements of the numbers 1, 2, and 3. How many different screen names can he create in this way? So we've got our decision chart. The first three again represent the letters. The last three represent the numbers. So for the, <coughs> for the letters, we have three letters to choose from D-A-V. So the very first choice, I'd have three letters. But since we're not using these letters over and over, we're not repeating them, the next one would, it would then be two left over. If I've taken one of the three away, I'm left with two. Which means that the third choice for these letters would be down to a one. So there's the letters right near for DAB. Then the numbers, followed by the arrangements of the numbers one, two, and three, there are three numbers to choose from. It's the same idea as the letters leaves you with two numbers to choose from after you've taken one of those numbers away, and then just one at the very end. 
And again, remember that when, with these decision charts, all we're doing is multiplying straight across. Multiply all these numbers together, and those right there. So 1, 2, and 3 for that section. When you multiply all these together, you're going to get 36. So there are 36 different ways to create this green arrow.